<clears throat> What's up, Pete? This your boy TNT Barbecue. How you doing today? Hey, I just wanted to uh, let you know what I'm working on. I'm working on a video on how to get crispy skin on a pellet grill. Uh, I'm doing a whole. I'm doing uh, about three or four whole chickens. Uh, I know I got a video out. I'll put the video in the description below. I'm pasting it right here on the description on the uh, inside of the chat to make sure that people can go over there and check that out. But uh, yeah, so uh, that that's what I'm working with, and that's what I'm trying to achieve right now. And uh, I just out here. Oh, okay, echo. So yeah, that's what we going on. What's up, TP? Just smoking some chicken legs. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. What's up, brother? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Matt Wood, what up, brother? How you doing over there in Iowa? So I'm finna get ready to do a video on um, smoked chicken. Hello from Detroit. All right, that's what's up. So basically, I'm doing a I'm doing three whole chickens. I'm using my Quiznar pellet smoker, okay? And uh, I do have uh, some crispy chicken videos out there. I have one. I just posted in the in the in the, in the chat right now. Hey man, y'all say what's up to my brother from Mad Wood Barbecue. Mad Wood Barbecue, man. What's up, brother? Y'all say what's up to him, man. I'm finna, I think I'm finna go over here and uh find his page. I'm finna actually I'm finna make my boy Mad Wood. If I can if I can find out how to do that. Uh, I think, man, well, you're already a moderator, ain't you? Yeah, you're a moderator for TNT Barbecue. Could you go ahead and put your link in the description below so that uh, everybody can go over and check your video page out? You're already a moderator. So, yeah, I thought you wasn't. I'm glad you are. Smoking Joe, what up, brother? How you doing? Good morning to you, man. Good morning, good morning. So, yeah, I'm going ahead and do... Uh, I got uh, three whole chickens I'm throwing on the pit. I got some friends going over and uh, got some friends coming over just popping in and uh, I want to have some good barbecue, but I, I told them I am working on a, a chicken video, so I'm going to get together and do a whole chicken video and I just want to talk about my cook. About, man, y'all, I'm jealous. Every time I see our Texas guy, 80, 80 80 degrees, all that good stuff. We out here, we praising the Lord for 40 degrees. We're jumping for joy. 40 degrees, yay! <laughs> but like I say, I'm going to put the uh, description below if anybody want to jump on me, jump on with me in this good morning. Yeah, y'all go over and check my boy uh, Mad Wood out, man. Go check his YouTube out, man. He just put a, sh a video up, I think it was yesterday. So yeah, what I'm seasoning with, I think I'm a uh I, I'm gonna do a this this is gonna be the key, guys, okay? So I'm gonna do a ratio of salt and pepper, but I'm gonna use different kind of salts. So I count every seasoning as a salt. So if whatever I use different than black pepper, I count as a salt. So if I'm doing a 50-50 ratio, I I got room to add other ingredients besides just plain old salt. Now I do discount garlic and paprika if I use it or things like that. But when it comes to seasonings, I count it as a whole as a part as salt. So that means like if I'm using 50% black pepper and I want to go to a 50-50 Dalmatian mix, I use kosher salt, sea salt, uh seasoned salt, caverners, whatever I can use. But it would add up to the same amount as the black pepper, if that makes sense. Because then, I, but I'm getting the flavors I want, but I'm not getting that uh 
what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not getting that over salty taste. It's not overpowering the barbecue. So that's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to my kitchen. I'm going to pull out some seasonings. And I'm going to just throw it on that chicken. And uh, I don't like sweet on my chicken. I, I just don't like it. I mean, barbecue sauce, yes. Before it's just um, putting it on like like uh, a sweeter rub on chicken, I, I, I kind of veer away from that. So that's why I like. Okay. Get when you start cooking. Okay. Uh, what's up, son? Okay, okay, okay. We about to get ready. All right, I'm on. Okay, I'm on live, son. I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm on live. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. My son had something to talk to me about. Uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video for one second and mute. It. All right, guys, I'm sorry about that. So, Mr. Uh, Clint, how you doing, brother? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Of, I'm going to come back to your question, Mr. Clint. Uh, I'm going to come back to your question when I think about it because that, that that's a hard question, and I want to make sure I, I explain it the way you can uh, – I can answer. So you may have to go to my my um, about me uh, and, and shoot me an email. We can talk about that uh, kind of face to face, you know, uh, either uh, on email or either chat. So that's what we'll do. OK. <laughs> hey, I wish I could miss move to the UK. I would love to move to the UK next to you, boy. I would love that. Oh, man. So, yeah. So I'm going to be using a seasoning. I'm going to use a, a salt and I'm going to use a black pepper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and season it down real good. And I'm going to put that on my uh, gallery backyard barbecue. What up, brother, man? Man, why don't you jump on with me? Why don't you jump on with me, gallery? I'm going to put the, uh, the chat right there. Just click on the link, jump in on with because I'm talking about that crispy skin on a pellet grill. And I know me and you, my boy got right back y'all barbecue right here. Man, this guy helped me out, man. This, this, this is a great guy, Tommy. So, man, Tommy, go ahead and click on the link if you can and jump on with me, man. Okay. Come on to Germany <laughs> and do a master class. I would love to, man. Oh. And how from France? Okay, we got France in the house. So yeah. So basically, what I'm, what I'm what I'm doing is I'm doing this for the pellet grill, guys. I want I want to make sure that I explain this right. So the key thing to pellet grills, okay, is first you want you want to achieve the smoky flavor. Because if you didn't want to achieve the smoky flavor, you would just put it in the oven. Agree. So what I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna start off low. And once I start getting the smoke flavor, I think I want on my chicken, then I'm gonna bump my grill up to a higher temperature. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna be adding that world famous mop sauce. If anybody know anything about the mop sauce, they know it's off the chain. TNT mop sauce, guys, I got a mop sauce video. It's off the chain, man. Uh, all right, I got, I got Canada, I got France, I got, I got, hey man, I got, hey. Joe, what's up, brother? I love all y'all guys, man. Uh, but like I say, man, if y'all want to jump on and talk to me, I'm right here. Just click on the link. It's just uh, right here. Just click on this link right here, uh, StreamYard, and uh, you can come on and chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, and we can talk about barbecue. So we can talk about pellet grills. We can talk about everything. Uh, but again, like I say, you want to start off low with a pellet grill. 
And I'm going a little more detail now before I go in the video because the video, I'm kind of run through it kind of because I want to get a video out. What's up, brother? How you doing? Um, so I'm going to start off lower and get that good smoke flavor into the chicken. And once the smoke flavor gets into the chicken, I'm going to crank the smoker up to a real uh, cooking temperature, like around 300, you know, maybe 350. But then that's where I'm going to get the cooking. And uh, okay. So, guys, we got some guys in here. What's up, brothers? What's up, man? Nothing much. Nothing much. How y'all guys doing? What's up, bro? Doing great. What's going What's up, on? Man? Hey, nothing much. Nothing much. How y'all doing today, guys? Up, guys? <laughs> so, What's up, oh. What's up, man? Nothing much. How y'all doing today, guys? All good. Hey man, I'm Clint. Okay, I got echo. Can somebody cut down a and some echo? So you, you you can't have a leak going and YouTube going at the same time. You got that? You got to mute one of them. How's this sound? Oh. oh, time gone. Okay, can you all guys hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Oh, yeah. I got hurt. Okay, then that's what's up, man. So, we're going to be doing a pellet grill cook today, guys. I'm going to be using a Quiznar cook. That's what one of my subscribers told me to cook on. You know, they recommend me go to Walmart and get that and cook some chicken or cook some stuff like that. So I'm going to be cooking some whole chickens. So my question to y'all guys is, um, have y'all have y'all got Christmas skin on a pellet grill? If y'all do have a pellet grill. I have a trigger, but I never get crispy uh, skin, no. Okay, okay, okay. Well, what about you, sir, Jason? <laughs> yeah, I got it, but I had to go high temps to get it. Okay. 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 And you, and you, you use the smoke flavor, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I got it, All but right. I had to go high temps to get it. Okay. Yeah. This is, you use the smoke flavor, correct? Yeah. Oh, one second, guys. Let me see where it's coming from, okay? Hold on one second. Let me see where it's coming from. Hello? Hold on one second, guys. Let me see where it's coming from, okay? Not you, Willie. Oh. Hello? Hello? Okay, I know who it is. Not you, Willie. You got to get, uh... Hello? Back draft barbecue. You got to mute one of the uh, things. You got to mute your YouTube. You got your back draft barbecue. You got to mute one of the things. Oh, you got to mute your YouTube. You got your. Oh, okay. You yeah, what's up? Okay. 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 Perfect. Okay. Now. Yeah. All right, I had, to, I had to make sure I found out the corporate. <laughs> so, basically, what we're gonna do today, guys, we we gonna go through this chicken cook. Okay, I do have a uh uh uh, uh I do have a crispy skin chicken cook on on YouTube already, but that that's chicken thighs. If y'all ever picked that video up. I use the pit boss, and uh, today I'm gonna use another grill. But I'm gonna do a whole. I'm doing six whole chickens. I'm gonna achieve the same outcome. And basically, what you should do. This is what I would do. I try to cut the pellet grill to the lowest temperature I can, and I don't even count that as cook time. So if you want your chicken done at five o'clock, you need to probably start this right at one o'clock. So. You can't count that hour or two hours to get your smoke flavor, okay? Because 
if you want you get if you want trying to get smoke flavor, you will put it in the oven, correct? That's right. So yeah. So if you got a trigger, I think the trigger lowest temperature is smoke setting. So you put it on the smoke setting, you get your smoke flavor, okay? You're not gonna get no color, you're not gonna get nothing. All you're gonna get is a smoke flavor, okay? Okay. okay. The second of all, try to buy a chicken under five pounds. Okay? Okay. And you know, always try to buy a chicken under five pounds. You see a lot of competition guys, they, they want to buy four pound chicken. They don't want because when the chicken gets bigger than five pounds, it's old. Oh, it's got real thick skin on it, okay? So 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 first of all, you start off the quality of chicken you get. And what I like doing is getting the chicken in the in the um in a vacuum seal bag because it has that solution in it. If anybody been following me, I, I like to buy all my meats with that solution in it, okay? And what that solution is, it's like a brine. So you don't have to brine your chicken if you do that, okay? But do Second, they have that in California? Yeah, yeah. They got them all. I've never seen it that way. So basically, it, it'll be like Tyson's or I'm going to see if I get one of my kids to run and, and grab a chicken, okay? And I'll show it to you, all right? Okay. So basically, it comes in like a – it comes individual in like a vacuum seal bag, and okay. it has like some solution in it. Mm. And, and basically, what that solution is, is it's, it's already a, a pre brined solution. Yeah, I've a never seen that. Good. Huh? I've, I've never seen that. Okay, okay, okay. You know, sometimes we you may have to just try a different grocery store or, or try like Sam's Club or something like that. They always have them in there like that, okay? Okay, okay. So then once you get that chicken like that, you you know, of course you get it. Watch out. I'm going to spatchcock it for y'all guys. Uh, the reason why you spatchcock it is because it cook, cooks flatter, okay? You know, uh, to me, it's a better representation of the chicken. I think so, spatchcock. You know, uh, every time I see like I cook a chicken that's whole, it kind of, I don't know, it's like the skin busts open kind of, I find out, okay? And what, what I'm going to teach you a couple of tricks, okay? So the first trick I'm going to teach you is, is to pull that skin off that backbone. And when you pull the skin off the backbone, basically you cut that backbone off but leave the skin attached. And you use that skin so when you when you start cooking at those high temperatures and when your skin goes to when your meat goes to swelling and your skin goes to shrinking, it'll shrink down to your chicken and you won't have that chicken busting open. So that's the first thing I'm going to teach you. The second thing is to salt your chicken like you do your steaks, dry brine. If you salt your chicken, that will help with a crispier skin too. And then uh, my mop sauce. Now, do you chuck a little salt on it? Excuse me? So the mop sauce. So do you chuck a little bit of salt on it? Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of kosher salt. I, I don't use uh, iodine salt. It's too strong. I use a little kosher salt, sprinkle yeah. on there, and that helps out with the skin. Okay? And then you want to make sure you count your salt. Okay, shoot. Um, how long do you brine your chicken? Do you uh, cover it with salt and then stick it in the refrigerator for a few hours? Or, I mean, how, how yeah, do you do about, that? About two or three hours. You know, no longer than that. Two or three hours, you know, uh, when I dry brine. I definitely, I, I think I I use this stuff called Chevetta's. That's the only time I... Uh, 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 what's the word I'm saying? Marinate my meat. When I use that seasoning called Chevetta's. But other than that, I always do a salt brine. And mm -hmm. Chevetta's is out there in New York. You know, Chevetta's. Hey, kids. Dallas. Could you go grab me a whole chicken out of the refrigerator, please? Yeah, yeah. Just grab me one of them out of the refrigerator, out of the garage. My wife don't allow me to keep the barbecue stuff in the... So, TNT, uh, do you do, uh, <laughs> when you do your brisket, do you always inject your brisket or not? No, no, I don't check nothing. I, I I do for videos sometimes, but when I'm out here cooking for the masses, I just feel like if you buy a quality brisket, which is choice or higher, you know, a, a quality brisket, 
stay away from select, okay? I'm just being honest. But if you buy a quality brisket choice to hire, and uh, remember, when you cook it on a pellet grill, that pellet grill got fans. So it's, it's shooting up. It shoot, it, it's like uh, the fans, are, it dries your meat out. You ever seen how uh, you pellet grill the fans and, the, and the everything looks dry? Because those fans are conduction, conduction heat. So yeah, there's a lot of air going through that. You're right. Yes. There's a lot of air. A lot of air. So what you got to do yeah. is leave a little bit more fat on your brisket than normal. So because it's more because you got so much conduction, a, a fan blowing. So if you trim that brisket down to like you cook it on a stick burner or you cook it on a different type of pit, it will actually dry your brisket out. Those fans will. So I cook a lot of brisket. On uh, fans, who's out there? Okay, so right here, these are the chickens I'm cooking today. Yeah, and I've never, I've never seen that. And I, we have wind oh. down over here in California. You know, pack and save and stuff like that. I've never seen them like that. Okay, okay, okay. And this is just a regular old store brand. And you see, it got like a solution in it. I see that. And, I, and and basically that just what that comes from the factory that way. And if you uh if you really look close at it, you can see where they ejected. <laughs> if you look really close, you can see where they ejected the meat at. Pork wow. loins the same way, ribs are the same way. Damn. Uh I would say 60% of your meat in America is 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 this way with a, with a, a pre brine solution. If you ever see anything that's extra meaty, extra tender, it's because they, they're, they're, they're soaking in this little brine solution kind of situation. So, yeah. So, if we don't, if I don't have that down here, can I just put the chicken in just a salt brine, like you say? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. It, you know, either way helps. But remember, when you go to, when you go to splash cut that chicken, I always get a knife and start first, and I want to flip that skin open on that backbone. Okay. And then I want to cut the backbone off and leave that skin on. Then flip the skin back over. You're going to have hanging skin at first until that uh, until you cut it up to high temperatures. I see. When you, and then that skin goes to tightening up, and that's when you see that skin tighten up, but then it, and then it fits the meat, and you don't have an ugly chicken. Okay. Because you, you, you made a, uh, you compensated for the heat that you're going to cook at higher temperatures. I see. I see. You know what I'm saying? So, yep. yeah, yep. there's tricks that uh, I do. The reason why is because I, I, when I'm not done selling to the public, people want to see that chicken come off that grill. They want to see it looking like something <laughs> like a piece of chicken. You know, they don't want to see burnt chicken. They don't want to right. see all skin all busted open. You know, right. you gotta look you right. know if you're charging, if you're charging doggone $15 for a half chicken, I want that thing to come off. I want to drip it. I want juices just fall off of it. Right. I, yeah. it, it, it got to be yeah. right. You got to oh, be yeah. right. Oh, yeah. You right. Oh, yeah. yeah, it got to right. be right. Hey, take them all out, son, and put them right there because I'm going to shoot my video on here in a few minutes. So, yeah. Um, and then, Okay, go ahead. Can I, can I ask a side note question? I, I just a side yeah. note question. Uh, my wife has been getting on me about not making any sides. I'm always cooking the protein, but I don't make any sides. Uh, <laughs> could you show us? I know you did a video at some point in time showing us your mac and cheese. Uh, yes. Could you do that video again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, you know what? You know what? Well, I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm doing actually macaroni and cheese. I'll be out uh, vending this weekend coming up on Saturday, and that's gonna be one of my side dishes. I'm gonna do smoked macaroni and cheese. And yes, you know the key to my macaroni and cheese is are you using old rusty? cream cheese in it. Are you using what old rusty? Cream cheese. Oh, cream cheese. Yeah, I had like Philadelphia dog, cream. Yeah. No, show Ruffy. show us the way. Right, Philadelphia cream Show cheese, way, right? For real. Yes, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, you, bro. Oh, Rusty. Uh, oh, Rusty. Oh, Rusty, a bad man. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, oh, Rusty, <laughs> make these new girls sit down. Oh, Rusty, make them sit down. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, 
every time so you put when you do your brisket, you gotta, when you do your brisket, uh, how, how yes, many sir. brisket would you do at a time? Like, would you do like just at what time in the morning would you do your brisket? Like three o'clock in the morning? Well, it, it, I do my brisket okay because I always serve at eleven. So what I would do is I would cook my briskets the day before. Okay. And I cook them all to 195, 197. Now they're not as tender now, but when I put them all in that cooler, in that That's white like cooler, tender. right up in foil, that cooler going to put them, shoot them up to 205, 215, 220. Yeah. And they're going to get tender. And I, I won't open that cooler until it started to bring them out and start slicing. And believe it or not, you cannot touch the. The, the brisket, you gotta have hot gloves on. They hot. They can stay hot in that cooler for 24 hours. So, if, hours. I, so if I decide like I want to do like brisket or or chicken, right? I'm from Canada. Yeah. So I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to like, because like just to get out there, to get my name out there, right? Mm. So what's supposed to be like a, you know, the the thing that may make you make you shine and make people okay. All right, everything to make you shine, man. I'm be honest with you. You got to give food away. You 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 got to go to a church or some kind of event and give people your food. But when you give them your food, you got to give them a card with your email or or, or, or and you got to have simple questions. Was a barbecue sauce? Was it too hot? Was it too spicy? Uh, was it too salty? Well, well, you know, you you you, you, you they want to know you want to know the truth, because you may think you got the bomb barbecue, but everybody out there may think, oh, I don't want to hurt this. Oh, yeah, no. Your friends will tell you it's good. Your family, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that's what I would do if I was you. I would just start off like at a church event, do a couple of free cooks, and be passing on cards, anything of that nature. That's how I kind of started off, you know. Well, I started off family. I inherited barbecue, but like for us growing my business, I was I was just doing church stuff and, and doing things for people in, in, in community, like like cancer fundraisers, weddings, funerals. And then pretty soon, you got to charge because. It, 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 so what should I, I what should I be charging when I do my like my, my brisket? Well, you got to look at it like here. Good barbecue ain't cheap. That's, That's right. right. Good barbecue ain't cheap. So I always tell people, I'm not the cheapest. I'm just the best. So I, I recommend, I recommend nothing under twelve dollars for a sandwich. You know, but you, you want that sandwich like this though. You know, it gotta you know, be you right. Know, yeah, you gotta be right. You gotta be tender, moist, juicy. Don't be going to robbing people. <laughs> get them old. Get them old. Thin. You know, sandwich like that. <laughs> right. Arby's. Don't give them no Arby's. And don't give them all bread. <laughs> yeah, don't give them all bread. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You know, so people when you get that, when you get that uh, reputation. Or bringing that quantity and quality, people will pay. That's right. That's right. That's people right. will pay. They know. And the thing about it, you got to always understand. You got to have everything somebody need at your barbecue stand. You don't want to go nowhere. You want to have your sodas. You want to have your napkins. You want to have the condiments. If you got hot dogs, you want to have ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise. If you got, you know, what they need, you want to fulfill their spirits, you know. So I always tell people, you know, charge. You know, like me, I charge twenty five dollars for a half uh, for a whole slab of ribs, uh, fifteen for a half slab of ribs. You know, then I got something called ribbon special. I do a half slab of ribs with a, a chicken quarter, and you get two sides. That's twenty bucks. You know. You have that's to. A, that's a fair price. That's a fair price. Yeah. Hey, James, what up, brother James? How you doing? We got Amy McClain in the house, guys. 
But yeah, so but yeah, most definitely. Hey man, you know, and the thing about a bank draft barbecue, if your product is good, but make sure your product good, man, before you go out there, uh sticker price shocking people. You can't go out there sticker price shocking people when, when, when you got some when you got some boo boo product. What's up? It ain't right. Most of everybody that had my food, like I did a big party for five hundred people, and I yeah. did two hundred pounds of brisket, and I, I, it was for a hundred year old, my one of my cousin hundred year old parties. She was a hundred mm-hmm. years old, and I never had no complaints about the brisket. The brisket was nice. So okay, all right. Well, then do what you do. Then do what you yeah, do. Can I ask you a quick question? Yes, sir. I'm thinking about buying that Heartland Heartland or rotisserie barbecue uh, uh, grill. G- give me your very honest opinion, because I'm thinking about you know doing using that as ribs and chicken. Am I going the right way about it with the Heartland? Man, look, bro. I, I would be honest with you, bro. When you get it, you're going to try to kiss me. Because it's the best. <laughs> man, let me tell you something, bro. The chicken, did you see my chicken? Come on. I get it. Off, off, off the hook, man. Shit. Man, man look, Ooh. man. And let me tell you something. You don't have to. I wrap stuff on that grill. Because I wrap it because of uh, I want to keep it for long periods of time. I see. Okay. And, I, and so I wrap, but you really don't have to wrap nothing on that grill. You you don't have to wrap brisket. You don't have to. But the only the only negative about that grill is you cannot put pans in that grill, bro. You can't put you can't put pans. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All the racks, all, all the racks will fall off that rotisserie smoker. Oh, okay, okay. See, I got another question. Uh, some people say, like you know, yeah. if you like, you charge in twenty five for a half. I mean, for a full wrap of ribs, and then you know you got half or fifteen. But some, you know, some people they bicker it because they say, well, you don't got no restaurant, or you can't sit in or whatever like that. So how can you argue about something like that? Like you know, man, look, man, to tell them to go to somewhere else then. Tell them right. to go to Famous Days and get that and get them that free boo-boo more barbecue. Right. Yeah, tell them, tell them go get that boo boo barbecue. But, <laughs> That's but right. more people are looking for people like you and me than looking for a restaurant, and that's the That's truth. Cool. They're looking for more mom and pa because you know why. So they get let me tell you now why. Okay, so this gentleman go right here, uh, Mister uh, Wild Go. Will D go? He goes. Will D goes and get him a uh, a Harlan Acres rotisserie smoker, okay? And he's cooking his food. He's cutting his chicken. He's cutting his ribs, okay? You go to Famous Days. Or you go to Sunnys. You go to whatever. Guess who you got cooking your meat? Some minimum wage person that's getting paid, underpaid, overworked. They don't give a damn how they cut the ribs, no but that's your business. Right. That's, right. that right. that's you, Jason. That that's you, Willie D. You, you care about what you putting out there. That's so you exactly gonna cut right. the ribs right. You gonna make sure that brisket cut against the grain. You gonna make right. sure that chicken is crispy. Because if that's it's not, right. you gonna throw it in the garbage. Because yeah, I'm right. I agree. So yep. they're paying for your quality control. The They're love. playing for your quality control so that you know you have touched every piece of meat, that you ain't got no minimum wage people out there. You season, cooked, cut, prepared, put in the box by the that's same right. person. I agree. That's right. And that's a lot of work. Bill D said it. Uh, it's all that love, man. That's right. It's all that love that you're putting in. Amen. It, that's, what it is. that's right. Amen. They pay I mean, for me. Was, I tell people like, you pay right? for me. That's right. You pay for T. Right. B- big T. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you pay right. for it. Yeah. Some people. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? I don't like to do, do this stuff. And he you want to nickel and dime me? Man, call the world. Yeah. Right. Tell him to go to Famous Days. That's right. Go to Famous Days and have some have somebody <laughs> minimum right. wage. <laughs> Cut the meat wrong and try it out for you. That's but if right. you want some authentic stuff, you come to Bike Draft Barbecue and get That's some right. authentic barbecue. That's right. That's right. You know, oh, hey, guys. Hey, hey. I got my boy smoking. Oh, somebody just dropped out, didn't he? 
Yeah, what's going on, guys? Hey, smoke How a you doing, <laughs> Man, I love your passion, Thayron. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, brother Joe. How you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Awesome. Y'all, hey, we, got, have... hey, we got smoking. Do y'all know who Smoking Joe is? I watch all Did your videos. Nervous. Nervous. I, I see YouTube. A little, I see a little bit of your <laughs> clips. Yes, that's right. <laughs> oh, hey, you, I was I was looking the at the ribeye steak cook. You what now? The ribeye steak cook. Oh yeah, that was good. Look, man. Yeah, him and James, this guy right here, James, smoking Joe and James for aiming to claim him. My brisket game was mediocre. I mean, when I'm for me, I'm being honest with you. I thought I could go to Walmart and put out a great product. I was just talking to James and smoking Joe, and, 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 and you know that hurt your feelings because. If they love you, they care for you. They hurt your feelings. They say you can't do that to you. You can't be messing around with the Walmart select. You got to go get some good stuff. Yeah. And then watch their videos and then ask them questions. That's why I'm on here now because sometimes videos do good, but sometimes you just got to pick up a phone and be like, "Hey, can you go in a little detail with me? Do that make sense?" So, Joe. I'd have called you how many times, though? <laughs> Several, and we text. <laughs> so you learn, you, mm -hmm. you, you always step your game up. You always step your game up because you're not just out here, you know, uh, you got so much resources, you know. So what's up, yeah, Joe, man? man? What you yep. I watch so Joe. Guys, so, man. Can you tell us about the pit master, Joe? Uh, yeah. Can you guys hear me okay? I hear you. Yeah. Good, loud and clear, All right. Because I, I was getting some real bad feedback, but it was on my site. Yeah. Um, that pit messers of uh, YouTube competition. Um, you know, actually, next Wednesday or this coming Wednesday, we uh, select the, the competitors. And um, on March 24th, we got 20 competitors. So those, those, uh, 20 guys have to put out their videos by March 24th and you know, all of our subscribers get to go to, they're going to have to end up in my channel to vote on my communities tab for who they felt did the better job on that cook. And if they win, they move on to the next round and there's five different rounds. And, and um, you know, the, the final cook is going to be where you cook a barbecue platter, kind of like what you would get at a barbecue place with, you know, three proteins and sides and stuff and whoever cooks it the best and whoever, <laughs> you know, makes it to the end. I mean, I think everybody's fans, everybody that's going to follow this thing is going to vote. So if I get kicked out, for example, my subscribers, and let's say Thyron's the, the, the last, one of the last competitors, you know, my subscribers are going to be voting for Thyron and whoever he's cooking against. So it's going to be so much fun. Um, got some good prizes for the winner of this whole thing. And um, man, it's going to be a blast. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see who the teams are going to be or who the, well, how they're going to pair up, I guess, and what protein they're going to end up cooking, man. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Now, are you that talking about Masters... streamlining this, or are you talking about actually tasting it? Oh, no, no. It's going to be all on YouTube. I mean, it's it's the kind of the YouTube edition of that Pitmasters uh, show that was out several years back. Okay. Except for, obviously, for YouTube, nobody can taste your food. You got to go based on the cooking process and the presentation and how you feel it looks, you know? Yeah. And, you know, if I go against Brother Thyron, I hope I don't. But if I do. Uh, <laughs> Those are not risky. <laughs> yeah. No, man. Is, I don't know, bro. I've seen you put out some pretty savage briskets, too, man. So, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're, if we cook a, against each other, then our subscribers are going to go to my channel and vote for who they felt did the better job. So Brother T's got to tell his subscribers, hey, go here and vote for me. I'm cooking up against Smoke and Joe, and I'm going to have a poll on there, and whoever gets the most votes wins. And you got three days to vote, and if you win, you move to the next round. So it's going to be fun. Man, y'all heard it here. Y'all already know who going to vote for. Vote for TNT. That's rigged this election. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm here to tell you guys to vote for Brother T, man. I don't know. Our channels are both the same size, I think, right now. Yeah. You know, I don't know what happened. I did a, a live one day, and next thing you know, I got like 20,000 subscribers off of a live video. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Well, because you, you, yeah, you put that you were smoking like 20,000 pounds of chicken or something that it was, and that's going to attract some attention. <laughs> Yeah, you and Uncle yeah. said, Thanks, mate. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly what that was. It's like, wait a minute, brother Thyra was cooking 20,000 pounds of chicken. I gotta see this. <laughs> oh, oh I, I tell you what, though, uh, this, this YouTube thing, I never imagined it to be the way to be what, what it is now to me. I yeah. just was doing it because. I couldn't find people with my passion with barbecue. So I, I just use YouTube as a place to kind of meet people that was passionate like me, you know? So yep. uh, that's all I'm using YouTube for is just to, just maybe if I can make a friend that was as passionate as me, you know, about barbecue. Because people don't understand this barbecue bug. They do not understand it. Mm. You know, they just look at it like, Oh, what's so hard about throwing meat on the grill until they got to throw meat on the grill? <laughs> and, and you got to do it in front of a camera. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Jesse James, yes. So you'll be able to vote. Um, I mean, you'll be able to vote once for that person. And you can continue to vote as long as you want, but you can only vote once. Um, Tyron, I'm going to share this screen so I can play the video, if you don't mind, of the competition oh, yes, and how yes. this thing works. Yeah. Oh, yes. Most definitely. All yes, right. sir. Okay. Uh, All right. So let me see. Where did I put that thing? Right here. Can you guys hear that? Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. All right. Here we go. Oh, yeah. There it is, man. Off the chain, off the chain, chain, chain. Yeah, and you know what? The nice thing about it is that everybody in the chat, if you guys are subscribers like to uh, TNT Barbecue, 
you guys have a chance. You guys saw Yoder Smokers being one of the the uh, sponsors. They're going to give away a Yoder Y640 pellet smoker. Wow. And, I mean, you're talking over $2,000 uh, free smoker that, that one of you guys will win just by entering and, you know, participating in this in this challenge. It's not participating, but participating as far as voting totally. and supporting. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. Man. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, tell your friends, man, when this thing rolls out, tell your friends to, I mean, we'll, we'll have more information soon on where to go register and stuff, but, um, yeah, it's going to be a big deal. T, will there be a notice on on you on your subscribers? Will you let us know when we we can do that, T? Hey, yes, sir. Trust me, I'll be trust me. I'll be ringing the bell. I'll be going <laughs> 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 T. T loves to win. Yeah. T loves to win, guys. <laughs> That's right. Hey, guys, hey, can I make a request or two? Yeah. Yes. Uh, please. Uh, I live in Florida, and I live off the Gulf, Gulf of Mexico, and I can literally get some fish right out the water in five minutes have it on the grill. But I don't know how to grill fish without destroying it. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's great, man. That, yeah. Could, could, please help me with that. And please, uh, like the side video I requested, please just do a video of the sides so I can shut my old lady up. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I tell you what, I, my wife been really on me about fish videos, so I'm, I'm gonna have to do a couple fish videos for you. Uh, what part of? Uh, I grew up around uh, Inverness and Crystal River, a small town called Wildwood. <laughs> Wildwood, that's where I get my chrome from, bro. I'm a truck driver. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wildwood yeah. 75 Chrome Shop? Sir, yes, sir. Oh, man. I grew up probably a mile. I grew up a mile. Oh, yeah, you on the road. I grew up a mile north. <laughs> I grew up a mile north of Wildwood out in the country, the farming community. Right. Over by Gator World. I know where that is. That, that's in my backyard. Gator World is in my backyard. Uh, my mom in the panhandle. Okay, my mom lives in Gator World, so my mom lives like two hundred foot from Gator World, guys. Mm. Yes, it used to be her land, but she sold it to Gator World because she wanted to retire. So, <laughs> yeah. oh, James Small said. World. Uh, James said to vote for him. <laughs> oh then, man. Uh, uh, Jason, uh, he said uh, on your question about fish, cedar plank your fish. So the thing about fish is that it's it's ready to, I mean, it cooks so fast. So the internal temperature of a fish should should be about 145. I mean, you can take it a little bit over, but not much over. Um, so it's nice and juicy still. So you got to smoke at a very low temperature. Okay. Very like low what, temperature. Like what type of temperature, Joe? I would explain, I would explain something. Yeah. Uh, uh -oh. JC, you bring it up, bro. Yeah, you broke up there for a minute. Okay, all right. Shoot, I'm brother. Sorry, I'm in yeah, yeah, so, like yeah. fish, I mean, fish, I, I'd smoke that you know, in the 150 range for a little bit and then slowly start to ramp it up a little bit. If you can go 100 degrees, then do 100 degrees and slowly ramp it up a little bit because the longer it sits in the smoke, the better it's going to taste. Um, now, if you're doing it on an offset, you'd be fine smoking at 225 because the smoke flavor on an offset is going to be a lot more intense than on, like on a pellet smoker. I see. Because you're smoking real wood. Um, okay. Okay. So you don't have to go as low on an offset I mean, if you can do 200, 225, you're good. Uh -huh. because and how long do you leave it on for, Joe? You know? Uh, to get to 140, it's going to happen quick, man. That's the thing happen about quick. fish. Okay. Yeah, it's it's going to cook really 145 degrees. So you want to probably pull it at 140 because you're going to have some carryover. Okay. okay. Um, and at 145, it's going to be nice and juicy and flaky. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, you can take your fish over that. I mean, people fry fish, and a fried fish goes over 200 degrees easily. But that's fried fish. I think uh, that's, yes. that's right. Yep. Yeah. Smoked, I mean, it's 
like salmon or anything like that, man, it's going to cook really fast. Okay. Um, you're talking maybe less than an hour because you can you can cook a whole chicken hot and fast, like 275, and have it done in an hour. You know, and obviously chicken's a lot more dense than than fish. Sure. You know, for sure. Yeah. But cedar plank, like James said, the, I put the fish on the Weber, man, and it just falls apart, man. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Anytime you can introduce flavor, like cedar plank, that cedar plank flavor, okay. uh, good seasoning and some smoke, man, that's some good stuff. And you know what I like doing too, Willie D. I yeah. like introducing, I like, I like introducing cast iron skillets. Oh, to okay. My, like, like cook an indirect temperature. And then have a cast iron skillet with your meat in it mm -hmm. and get to that 130, get to that 125, and then put that cast iron skillet on a, right over your coals. And then that would get your crispy skin if you're doing oh, salmon. Yeah. Makes you know, sense. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. get the smoke and you get the crispy skin. Okay. Okay. You know, yep. you know Joe's right. You, you the, the lower you can bring it up, the more smoke flavor you'll get on that chicken. I see. Okay. You, you probably can do the same thing with a pellet grill, you know, like 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 James said, uh, just reinforcing what Joe said, you know, it, it, the lower you can keep those temperatures down, the more smoke flavor you can get. That's right. Okay. Okay. Yep. And, and yep. Joe, where is that? I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. Go no, go ahead. So and the more moisture, you more not moisture. That's not a word. The more moisture, moisture. it is, the the, be, the more smoke flavor it, it, it takes on. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And I fish. gotta plug my phone, and my phone's about ready to go dead. I go. I gotta go find me a charger. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, fish obviously fish is like as moist as it gets. I mean, they live in the water, hey, brother. right? God bless all you guys. I'll be talking to you guys soon. Later, man. All right. All right, later. 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 All right. Yeah. But you know, fish is fish is extremely moist already to begin with, you know. So um, you know, the smoke is definitely gonna stick to it for sure. Oh. We want <laughs> hey, is, is Uncle Sid coming back? Yeah, yeah Uncle Sid, he's coming back, yes. He he wants to get his uh his vaccination before he comes back to Iowa. I got you. So That's smart. His, his age range, his, his age range is next. So they're doing the sixty-five range, and then they when they do the, uh, I think it's sixty on down to fifty-five, and then he'll get his his, his COVID shots. Yeah. And that That's age range, yeah. Yeah. I just got I just got my second shot, and I feel like crap. Really. Oh my goodness! Are you are you tired? Oh yes, very tired. Arm is swollen. Damn. Really hurt. Whole body feel like I just got tackled. You know, like like two days football. <laughs> yeah, we were talking to some friends last night, and uh, they said the shot, the first shot was fine. The second shot was like, man, they slept all day. Like they were just tired, dead tired. That, 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 yeah, that, that's how. That's exactly how I feel right now. I'm kind of scared of that shot, man. I really am. I'm just I don't even take the flu shot. I'm just I'm just terrified of it, man. I just I've never know. I've never taken a flu shot ever in my life. But me neither, I mean, man. But I think this one, I mean, I think that there I don't think there's been any cases of anybody dying. I mean, there's some small yeah. side effects, but mm -hmm. I think the the other option is is not a good one. Obviously, this it's better yeah. to get the shot and right for sure. I mean, I'm. I think everybody's terrified of this damn thing. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. I'm in. Can... I'm in California. I'm. I'm actually in the flower business. I own flower shops here in uh, California. There you go. Okay. And I do a uh, barbecuing on the side for you know friends and family. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, yeah, it's it's real bad out here in California still, man. I'm, I mean, we're we're sitting on like eleven bodies right now just on the funeral side. Oh man, that's that's sad. You know, I lost really I lost fourteen. Oh, I lost my uncle in Florida uh, this about three weeks ago. I lost my uncle. Wow, sorry to hear that, T. Yeah, that's okay. Um, my, my, my uncle Cece, he was a great. I mean, when I say a great guy, I mean, you know, he was a little version of me. You know, he was very outgoing, but he was just smaller. You know, he was 165 pounds, 
you know, great condition. You know, it just he got COVID and just took him down. But the the, the point I'm trying to say is uh, that right there just made me like, you know, it just kind of, you know, it just made me feel like, you know what, I I rather err on the side of caution, protect my family. For sure, I, for sure. I work in a lot of. I got to be. I got to go to work every day. I ain't got no choice, you know. Right. Uh, people depend on me, you know. Uh, the inmates depend on me. Their families depend on me. So I got to be there as an administrator. So I got to make sure that I'm able to, you know, go to the doctor's office and do things like that. So, T. Now, do you do this full time barbecue, or you have a, a, another job? Oh, I got another job. <clears throat> oh, okay. What do you do for a living? If you don't mind, I work full time. No, I'm a jail administrator. Oh, a jail administrator. Like, like, okay. like a warden. Oh, okay. Like a prison warden kind of. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. So I do more like uh, making schedules, uh, discipline for his inmates, discipline board, uh, discipline officers if I have to, um, okay. hiring, background checks. I see. Uh, you know, setting up transports, medical appointments, just administrating, making sure that the uh, facility runs in a, you know, a, a good rate, you know, the facility, you know, taking care of mental health, things of that nature of, of, of our clients. So we try to make sure we take care of everybody, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the only reason why I brought that up. You know, it's uh, a small uh, world. I, I used to be a correctional officer. got your shot. Mm. Huh? I, I, the reason why I brought that up because I, I was wondering how you got the shot because you know my brother he's a CO you know I got some family in the law enforcement and they got their they got their shot as well. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. That, that's I got my shot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I drive a squad car to work every day. You know, it's just yeah. one old thing. You know, I I, I, I would never want to go on the streets. The streets ain't for me. I'm more of a inside personality kind of guy, you know, like press yeah. officer. I like to be with the inmates. I like to, uh, you know, treat them like the kings and queens, you know, treat them good. Right. We, we probably, we hold for the federal government, we probably average one fight a year. And we oh, hold no, federal. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. We average one. Yeah, we don't, you know, when I took over, we were averaging 64 fights a year. 64, wow. 70 fights a year when I took over as the administrator. And uh, we, we just changed the way we started doing things, you know. I see. You know, give more, expect a lot, you know, things like that, you know. And, and, and every year just went down to now we have so much to offer our uh, – You still there? He froze on us. He froze on us. Smoker Joe, do you uh do that full time barbecue, or you have a side gig as well? No, I got a full time job. This is just my little hobby, man. Okay, what do you yeah. do for a living? If you don't mind me asking, I work for O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, I, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm a regional yeah, we have sales that down manager here in California. Thing. Yeah, where, where hey. are you at, Joe? If you don't mind me asking, in Texas, El Paso. Oh, in Texas. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about you being a hot spot, man. El Paso's like. Bad. No shit, huh? Yeah, wow. it was bad. It, it's 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 terrible, man. Yeah. We had lost you, T, just for a second, brother. Oh, okay, I'm I'm here. I'm gonna put Joe. Uh, I'm gonna put smoking Joe. Uh, Joe's. Um. Oh Lord, I can't hardly talk, guys. <laughs> it's a shot. <laughs> I'm gonna put it. Is is um in the description. In the chat, I'm gonna put as well his uh, YouTube page. Y'all need to go and subscribe to him, man. I'm telling you, you would do yourself a disjustice not to subscribe to Joe. Okay, man. Well, thank you, man. Um, you know you got master class. Or, I think that's what they call it, master class. Yeah, bro, we got it already. <laughs> yeah. You don't need I'm to pay gonna, anybody. I'm gonna tell you. About seven good YouTube channels, guys. If y'all if y'all listening out there in the YouTube world, I got 31 people in here. I'm gonna tell you, if you want to do barbecue, and this is just seven. If I miss anybody, please not offended. Just the seven people I'm thinking about right now. 
But it's seven class, seven YouTubers. I know for a fact, if you're not subscribed to the YouTubers, I will pay money to subscribe to them. You got Joe, Smoking Joe Picks, aiming the claim of smokers, okay? You got my boy Rick at the meat stall. You got um you got ballistic barbecue, Greg, you know, you got um another good YouTuber. I forgot his name, guys. I'm telling you, getting old it sucks. Getting old it sucks. <laughs> but but it is so many people, and I still got a couple more to, to think about. But you got mom and pa. This is a new YouTube channel. But you watch his channel, Joe. You learn so much from him. You know, it, it just you got you got T Roy Cooks. You got um oh Lord, what's the Texas guy with the long beard, Joe? He's Chef Johnny. Chef Johnny. Oh, yeah. It's just so much knowledge out there. And of course, you got TNT barbecue, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but the thing is, people would do themselves just justice by messing up all this good barbecue when there's so much people here that go step by step, step by step, step by step of getting good barbecue. And and, and that's what I want to do. I think that's the reason why I like this stream yard because we could get on here and we could talk with somebody like you and mm-hmm. step your barbecue game up tremendously just by uh Joe, question I ask you, Joe. Yeah. Our goal is to get crispy skin, but also smoke flavor on chicken on a pellet grill, Joe. Yeah. What's your thoughts? Yeah. So smoke it at like 225 for as long as you can smoke it, you know, 200, 225 and wait till, wait till that uh, internal temperature. Because you got to remember, you got to take your thighs to 165 or more and your, your breast to 165. So uh, cook it at 200, 225. You know, it's going to give you a lot of smoke. The lower the temperature, the more smoke flavor you're going to get. Mm-hmm. And then when you're when you're close to almost being done, I'm talking about in that 145 range, crank that temperature up on that smoker as high as it'll go. I mean, I don't know what you're smoking on. And I don't want to say as high as it'll go, but a good temperature, you know, let's say 375 degrees, real hot. Get it real hot. And that's gonna that's gonna cook the chicken faster on the outside than on the inside. That's gonna crisp up that chicken. And one thing I like to do is spray the I can't believe it's not butter on the skin right before I crank up the temperature and then and and crank that smoker up. Now, if it's going to take your smoker 30 minutes to warm up, you can pull that chicken out and then put it back in because if you go to one, if you raise your temperature at 145 to 375 from 200 or 225, by the time it gets to that 375, your chicken might be ready. So it's not going to sit in that 375 range for a long time. Mm-hmm. So... So you can play it by ear. You can do it at 125 degrees, but then you're in danger of cooking the outside and the inside's not done and your skin gets too dark. So it's got to be timed perfect. Uh, For me, it's in that 145 range. And on my Yoder, I can adjust the temperature to 375 from 200 to 225. And it's going to take a while to get there. But on my Yoder, I can feed pellets into into the uh, firebox. So I just hit the feed button. And man, it's gonna crank up that temperature up in like five minutes. I'll be there, wow. you know, because it's just dumping pellets into that into that fire pot. Um, not not every smoker has that option. So, well, most smokers they call prime, like like yeah. like, like a, a prime button or anything like that. Yes. Does yours have that prime button? Yeah, mine yes. does not. Mine does not. I got okay. a little trigger. Yeah. yeah, triggers. No, they don't. They don't have a prime button on the trigger. No, they don't. No. So, do the the smoker that you're going to use, Thyron, does that have that prime button on it? I know I have one of my pit balls. I'm mm. cooking on my Quiznar right now. My Quiznar. Yes, it does have a prime button. Yes, it does. Oh yeah. So once it hits 145, prime. I mean, just sit there and hit, feed that prime button and and get it nice and hot. And um, you'll get it there in less than five minutes or five minutes. And then, um, you know, that's going to create a lot of smoke in there, too. So it's get a good mm-hmm. layer of smoke and crisp up that chicken skin. Man, it's going to be good. Can I yeah. can I ask a quick question? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. On, on, on that, on that, like, okay, so I do a little bit of cheating. I don't know if this is, it might be breaking the law, right? 
but what I do with the trigger, since I like the 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 the, the crispy, like like T said about the the, the crispy uh skin, yeah. I throw I throw it on a Weber, man. Yeah, you I can do that. A, a you Weber can you can flip, flip it, it like upside flash down it, and flash it to give it to give it the yeah the, the like the grilling the grilling taste as well with the with, yeah. with the charcoal. Hey Thyron, are you already smoking that chicken? No, I'm doing a video on it. I haven't smoked it yet. Uh, they're sitting oh. up here, and they're getting ready for a video. I, I, I'm finna do a video here in a few minutes. You gonna spatchcock them or no? Spatchcock them, yeah. I'm gonna uh, cut the backbone out of them, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the skin over when I do the backbone, so the skin can have a little more skin to work with when the chicken shrinks. And when the skin shrinks. The skin will still stay on the chicken. That could be yeah. one of my pro tips today, one of my pit boss jewels today. But, yeah. but I just don't – my video going to be kind of fast today because I am tired. So I know when I get tired like this, I don't always – I leave a lot of stuff out. So I just want to do like a little YouTube live to really explain mm -hmm. the chicken without doing a 30-minute video. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I get kind of long-winded on my videos, Joe. <laughs> No, man, T, can right. I ask you a question, T? Yes, sir. Do, do you do you do you, like is, is that cool to do it that way, or I shouldn't be doing it that way with the Weber? Like doing yeah. it to the trigger or to the Weber? Listen, when it comes to barbecue, long as you get that good turnout, I think you're if it works for you, keep doing it. Okay, okay. Because you you, you don't have the uh, prime button, or like you could do like Joe, you could take it off if, if you don't feel like using two sources of charcoal and wood okay. yep. so you can take the meat off cut your smoker up let it come up to temperature and then put it meat side down right joe okay, yep. okay. yeah okay. a lot of people you know even in competition barbecue they're doing what you're doing will oh so really yeah so yeah. they're gonna smoke their chicken and and then they'll put some grill grates on like a weber Okay. Flip it upside down like with a skin down and get some like sear marks on that skin just for That's presentation right. purposes yep which is, I think, what you're doing. I mean, and you can do it. You can flip it. Okay. okay. I mean, because if you're doing it at home, you're doing it for yourself. For sure. I'm doing it for my family. I mean, my we're, we're doing it for YouTube, you know, so it's got to look good. And so we got to worry about right. the skin yeah. pulling back and all that. Okay. Man, okay. if you're at home, smoke it on your Traeger and okay. then have your, your Weber nice yep. and hot and then just sit there and flip it back and forth. Man, get okay. some of that star on there. Man, yep. that's money right there. Okay. Well, that's what that's what I've been doing, man. So I just, yeah. wanted, to, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Yeah. I like that. Joe, question I ask you. Mm -hmm. Do you like sweet stuff on your skin? I, I mean, I like the barbecue sauce, but me personally, for a seasoning on a chicken, I'm more of a savory guy. Like, like, yeah. like I, I like that savory, like, like the imami flavors. Like, I like the, you know, and that's one thing about my mock sauce. When you boil down all those, when you fry all those onions, bell pepper, garlic, uh, sometimes jalapeno, when you fry your vegetables in that lard, and then when you add the vinegar to it, that brings out that flavor when you mop that meat, you know? Uh, so, I, 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 you know, um, I, I, I guess I'm, with you. I'm not really a sweet kind of guy when it comes to, I mean, you can glaze it off with some, with some glaze, you know, I may be down for that, but me personally, I like my chick, my chicken kind of, um, uh, um, you know, authentic, but uh, yes, that's what I like. Yeah, I, you know the 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 one thing that that everybody has in their home and it never gets used is that broiler on the bottom of your oven. Oh, and I gotta right. tell you, yep. some of the best chicken that I have ever had has been done on the broiler with simple wow. salt, pepper, and garlic, like on the oh. skin, like that. You're talking about that flavor, Thyron? Yes, yes. Yeah, like. I've got I've got some chicken videos, but I, I don't have like a like an authentic like backyard barbecue chicken where you brush on the sauce or any of that stuff. Now that's that's good. There's nothing wrong with that chicken, but I don't that's not that's not me. I would rather have more savory, like you said. Yeah. Um, there's I wouldn't um, put I wouldn't put barbecue sauce on, on yours, T the you know the 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 mop sauce with the bell peppers with the yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't do it. I would leave it just like that. Have you, have you tried that mock sauce yet? I, I, I haven't yet. I haven't had the time, but I'm getting to it. Yep. Nice. Now, now my, Go ahead, T. 
So, oh, so you 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 use a now you using a well you use a kettle grill and you also using a uh, Traeger. Yeah, I'm I'm using uh, yeah I'm using a Traeger. I got the original Traeger and I'm also using a Weber. Okay, well, if you ever want to get into uh like like uh stick burning, okay. Uh, what do you recommend, Joe? If he if he if he says, you know what, it's time to get some authentic barbecue. It's time for me to cook some authentic. What do you recommend, Joe? Uh like for an offset, I mean, there's a lot of options, man. Just stay away from the real thin metal stuff. I mean, like, okay, stay away from the char broilers. Stay away from okay. those real cheap Walmart ones, okay, uh, because. Yeah, they look really nice, man. They, when they're brand new, they look really nice, okay? But, man, the first time you light up that firebox, the paint's going to burn off of it. Oh, it's shit, so, okay. It's so, it's so thin. Any um, recommendations? Any any? What about you two? Any, any recommendations on, on, a, oh, on a really nice one? So, yeah. Academy Sports. What's yep. it called? Academy. Academy? Okay. Yep. Well, go online. They, 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 they have these uh, smokers... It is made out of Texas. I'm trying to think of the name of the smoker. Uh, old, old, Pecos, country. old country. Uh, old country. Yeah. yeah. Old country smokers. Old country smokers. Okay. They have. You will be amazed the prices they have. Like, like it's like the old school, like it's the old school Brickman smokers. Before they were Brickman, it was hot. Uh, I forgot what they call like a hot Highlander smoker. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's built like that. Quarter inch thick steel, heavy gauge, big exhaust for four five hundred dollars. Oh, okay, okay. You know, and, and like I say, you'd be amazed what you get, and, and and just the price, you know. But I would go with that type of smoker, you know, or or you know, Oklahoma Joe. Yeah. Is hit hit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, because 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 it just you know it, it also depends on believe it or not, it depends on the year you get it, like the year it was produced. Oh, I see. Okay. Because oh, one that makes a difference, huh? Wow. Yeah, because one time I went and brought an old school Oklahoma Joe. It was still in a box. It, I brought it like a one of those Ben and Dent stores, Joe. You mm -hmm. know when they overstock to these big dead stores. I brought it from an Amish store and that thing was heavy. I, I mean, and then I I, I, I sold it actually because I was like, you know, I'm just going to sell it to make room for another smoker. And I went to the, to the uh, Home Depot and I went to go buy, was it Menards or Home, one of the big box stores and it was on display and I say, what the hell is this? This ain't the same Oklahoma Joe. They say you must have got the older model. Wow. So, you know, it, but I, I, what so happens it, a lot of time, T, is is some of these companies like they start out in the US and yeah. then they sell and then they sell to China. I think Traeger was one of those too. Traeger was mm -hmm. at one point made in the US. So if you have one of the old Traegers, you know, I've never owned one, so I can't tell you the quality, but obviously okay. any, anything made in the U.S. is going to be a higher quality. Yeah. Um, somebody had mentioned on the in the comments, yeah, if you've got a if you've got the money, if you can swing it, you know, Yoder's made in America and and it's one of the best things out there. Okay, yes. um, yeah, yeah. Money's not a, a, money's not a problem. Yeah, so yes. Yoder would be the way to go. Yeah, oh man. yeah. Get an insulated firebox. Okay. Yeah. Get an insulated firebox, you know, okay. you're gonna use less wood. Um, that's what I've got. I smoke on Yoders. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, that's, that's to me, that's the best, but a lot of people, I mean, I don't want to say a lot of people because let's face it, people our age, we're not, we're not making $20,000 a year. Like when we were younger, 25,000, right, we're, sure. we're making yeah, decent sure. money. We're, that's right. we got a, that's we got exactly a home, right. you know, yep, that's right. And we're, I think we're smarter and wiser. So for sure, you know, the, yeah, you can start at the entry level, but I'm the, I'm the kind of guy that, man, I, I want to buy the best and buy it once and, and have sure. it last forever. You know, it's like I hear you on that, man. Yeah. Yeah. So Yoder, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna look into that. Yeah. Look Any up, particular man. model? The um, it all depends on what you want to do. The look at the Cimarron. 
the Cimarron. Okay. Oh man, that's a beautiful smoker. Okay. Um, you know, so if you're if you like to entertain in your backyard, man, your friends are gonna be like, man, look at this thing. It's badass. I mean, okay. it's just built yeah. like a tank. Okay. Um, and then you know, there's there's small ones uh, that I think would be too small for what I use, but or for what I do, but. Um, it all depends if you like to entertain, you like you have a big family over. I have a big family, man. I'm half yeah. Latin, half European, brother. Oh, there you go, man. So <laughs> yeah, but that's that's the way to go. I mean, I, I've got a, a frontiersman, which is one of their largest ones. Okay. Um, but you know, I do a lot of catering and stuff too, I you see. know. So that I, I buy I buy for what I need it for. I mean, if you have a small family, buy a small smoker, but if you got a medium family, buy a medium smoker, and if you got a real big family, then get yourself something big. Something big, okay. Yeah. Dee, do you mess with the uh, Yoder? Well, I haven't yet. I am in the process of looking at a, a you know, a, a Yoder pellet grill. A Yoder pellet grill, okay. Yeah, yeah, just for YouTube, though. Uh, I uh, I, right now, I need something bigger than okay. Yoder has to offer because uh, I'm just doing so much uh, commercial cooking. I see, I see. And, and, I, and I'm trying to get away from uh, uh, cooking one thing on a pellet grill, then cooking another thing on uh, uh, stick burners. So, I see. so I'm basically trying to get something that has uh, uh, um, propane assist with the, with the, with the wood flavor, but not losing the offset. Smoke flavor. Does that I make see. sense? Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah. Oh, and it cook, but then again, though, I still want that flavor. I see. So that's what I'm working with. Uh, I don't know if Joe got something bigger than what Joe has, but Joe's own is is pretty big. But uh, I'm kind of still trying to. Basically, I'm trying to get ready to retire, and when I retire, I'll be doing this cooking for my full time job. I so see. I need something to grow with me. So that's why I'm looking at something real bigger right now. I'm, I'm actually yeah. looking at a smoker right now. It's it's actually a rotisserie smoker, but it can hold up to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 1,300 pounds of food. So that's what I'm looking at. Wow, my that's big, man. Damn. Yeah, yeah that, I like that rotisserie, Thyron. I mean, if you're doing big jobs, I mean, that thing is, that's the way to go. That, yeah. that rotisserie. I mean, how many racks of ribs can you put in that thing? Well, it depends on how small they are, how big they are. Uh, average ribs probably about eighty slabs. That's about crazy. eighty-five slabs. Yeah, eighty-five I, I, ribs. I couldn't do that on my frontiersman. Now, Joe, you know, you're your, talking your about the heartland, ribs? are you? The rotisserie heartland? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think it's nice, man. It I is think nice, it's man. Only thing about that rotisserie smoker is you can't have a bone off the edge. So if say this is the edge of the smoke or the rotisserie and a bone's in here, if it goes up, it's gonna catch and it's gonna flip the whole rack. Oh, yeah, the rack, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you gotta take all the racks out to fix that one rack. Oh no. And put it back together again. Cause when one rack flip over, all the other racks just flip over and dump all your food on the on the uh ground. Oh, okay. Because I was looking at I was looking at your tea that heartland. It seems like the racks are real narrow. Are they really narrow? No, the bottom rack is is very about almost a foot and a half. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. and then the, and then the uh, the top rack is uh, half about I say about a foot wide. You know. Okay, okay, so, okay. So the bottom rack is a lot bigger than the you know, but it, it works out. The only thing is, like I say, nothing can hang off to the side. Nothing. And, okay. Uh, I'm going to share a story about last week, okay, guys? Mm -hmm. So, when we talk about bad experiences, Joe, last week was my worst experience ever in barbecue, okay? So. You were smoking before, ribs, right? I was smoking ribs, chicken, and sausages, okay? Yeah. So it started off Tuesday. I went to the place to, to, to pull my uh to pull my grill in. I brought my potato salad. So I stepped out of the truck. I fell down, uh slipped on ice. I cracked my rib right here. Okay. Oh, oh dang. That Thursday, okay. So then 
I, you know, got bandaged up, whatever, whatever. Went back out to the spot Saturday. I pulled my rotisserie grill there. Went to turn around, and my truck got stuck in the snow. My big old F two fifty, it just sunk down in the snow, and it wasn't going nowhere. Damn. So I had to sit out there for four hours waiting on the tow truck to come. The tow truck got there. It it was just horrible. Okay, so Saturday, let's fast forward to Sunday. So Sunday, I'm out here cooking. We got, I think, if I'm not mistaken, seventy slabs of ribs on. If I'm not mistaken, we had set because we had uh, like fifty slabs of pork ribs and about twenty five slabs of beef ribs. Okay, and we got them on the rotisserie grill. So when we went to wrapping them, I started putting my chickens on. Okay. So I put 45 chickens on and I stacked the ribs up kind of close to each other. But when I was stacking them, I was just throwing them on there, not thinking. Because, and guess what happened? The rotisserie turned, it caught. All the racks start. <laughs> so. Oh, oh no. Yeah. But guess where all the whole chickens went at? Into the pork grease, into the beef grease. Oh, no. I got a garbage can. I, I threw away about 45, 44 whole chickens, okay? Threw it away. So we put we put it on again, and, and I went to stack it again. And, of course, people come out there to help you because they see you having a hard time. So I put the racks back on the smoker, put them out there. This time it's 10, 15, okay? I'm getting the smoker hot again because it's easy to get that rotisserie hot. I put the reels back on there. I put the sausages on there and we cut the smoker on again. It started rotating. Boom! It hits again. All the rats come tumbling down. Damn. What? One of the ribs was hanging off the edge of the smoker. Oh, man. So we, 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 we take every rack off the rib. Every rib. We had to, had to get my big butt inside the grill to grab the ribs out of the Damn. grease. You know, they were wrapped pretty good. This is why I use a lot of little foil. So we, we got the ribs. So then we put the smoker back together again. Then we put them on there the right way. We just said, screw it. We did it the right way. It worked like a charm. Ribs got done. Put the sausages on. We were supposed to serve at 11 o'clock. The ribs wasn't ready to 12, 15, 12, 20. Customers was getting upset at me. And basically, this is what I told the customers. I said, hey, before, I prefer you walk away now than to walk away with a bad product that's not representative of TNT barbecue. Wow. So I turned away customers, actually two customers. Everybody else waited. Wow. Hey, Thyron, so does the grease not drain in there? Or did you have the valve closed or something? No, the grease drain. It, the grease drain, it was just... Uh, I had it tilted up and I had to tilt it back down because I had this big bucket of grease and I, I didn't have nowhere to uh, put it because I'm at this fancy uh, museum place and I just didn't want to it to overfill and get on their nice um, concrete or whatever. Concrete. So w w what I did was I just even it back down so it wouldn't drain no more and I tried to dispose of the grease, but I just was kind of like very hesitant. Did that make sense? So I'd rather keep grease in the smoker, which yep. was a bad for me, because I, I should have just dumped the grease in a double bag and, and, and double bagged it up. But I'm always hesitant to spill any grease on people, concrete and grass, mm -hmm. things for like sure. that. People come unglued about that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. They, yes, they do. Yes, they I, do. So I always got to make sure, you know, I always tell people when I cater for them, it's actually one of my contracts. Like I need a surface where if I'm coming to your house to cook that I don't burn your grass. I, you know, I'd have some kind of surface where if the grease spills, it don't spill on concrete. And I, I do lay out certain things that that catches the grease. Like I do cardboard, I do certain things like that. But I try not to do that because People are real. When when they pay for TNT to pull up, that's why I charge so much because I'm under extra stress. I charge 
twelve hundred bucks to cook on site. I used to charge five hundred. Now it's twelve hundred. It's just too stressful. Yeah. If you want me to cook, if you want the the dance and show and having a smoker going with everybody smelling it and get the oohs and ahs and all that, you got to pay for that because it's stressful as hell. Yeah. You know, yep. when you at home, Joe, it's a, it's a lot better cooking at it, Joe, because you if you forget something, you got to just walk to the garage or walk to the kitchen right. or right. to my trailer. But if you forget something out there, you got to improvise. And yep. then my wood was running low, Joe. So I was running mm. out of wood. It was just like, but guess what, Joe? You got the it done. Got amazing. We sold everything, Joe. Nice. We, we I'm gonna tell you what we sold. We sold 70 slabs of ribs. Wow. We sold over 120 pounds of pulled pork. Damn, that's a lot. All gone. 120 pounds. We sold. We we, we buy nacho chips. And we buy them in, in in bags. And we had uh three cases, and it's it's ten bags in a case. We had 30 bags of nacho chips. We sold all 30 bags. And it's probably it's it's three orders to a bag. So 90 orders of nacho of barbecue nachos we sold. We sold uh we had uh let me see how many kibasas we had. It's 30 kibasas come in a case, but the 30 kibasas make two sandwiches. So because you cut them in half and then it's it's two. So it's 60 sandwiches in a uh, case. We had three cases. We sold every kibasa sausage we had that day. Wow. Big wow sandwich. That's a lot. We sold a lot, you know what I'm saying? But one thing I tell you, if you're barbecuing and you get help, you have to pay your help good. Yeah, you got right. to pay at least. I always tell people, if you work for me, I'm paying you $250 a day. And that's all day. Well, I'm coming to work for you, man. I'm on my way. Well, <laughs> I, you're not going to. I wouldn't give up my Saturday for 100 bucks. I wouldn't. Right, right, right. right. You're right. right. I would. 200, yeah, I think about it. 250, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, that's right. And that's you get right. to eat for free probably too. Yeah. yeah eat, for free. Right. eat for free, it, it just, you know, and then it's not stressful. I try not to be stressful. I try not to be drama. When you work for me, let's have fun. But this mm -hmm. th this event was very, very stressful. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. It had to be the toughest cook besides... Uh, one time that I had somebody body on me. Another thing, never have, never cook any, I swear, never, ever, never, ever. If anybody say, hey, I supply the meat, you tell them, hell no. Don't walk, run away from them. <laughs> run away from them. The worst experience I ever had is when people choose their own meat. Wow. Okay. Look, at this guy, he say, T, I will buy the ribs. You just cook them for me, and I'll pay you $10 a slab, okay? I go there. When I seen the ribs, I told him, I'm done. I'm not cooking this shit. Excuse my expression. Lord forgive me. But I said that. I'm not cooking this shit. I'm not cooking it. I refuse to cook it. And it was uh, it was called sour ribs. It, it, you know what a sour rib is? Uh I, I, I don't. I don't. Okay. No. So a sour rib, you can get nine slabs of ribs for 25 bucks. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, different companies like Bob Evans, their ribs sell them. Uh, basically, what a sour rib is, is basically it's it's, it's, it's a uh, female hog that, that has babies all the time. So the ribs do this and do that all the time. Oh, I see. Okay. So they cut these ribs off, and you can tell a sour rib because the sour rib ribs are curved a lot. Oh, and they're really okay. Huge. They're huge. I they're see. sour ribs. And I do see. not, never cook them. Never. Never so cook them. Okay. They would never get tender. I you see. can boil them, you can wrap them for three hours. <laughs> I've been them for three hours, Joe. I done smoked them. They look, they look golden brown. They look delicious. And when you wrap them, three hours in a wrap, a full wrap, bro. 
and them things you unwrap them and them things they just don't get tender they don't like get rubber tender. like they rubber like, it, it just, any, it, any any particular of uh, 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 brand that you that's for spare ribs i mean i mean any particular brand like maybe that you know in california oh uh, if y'all got smithfield okay tyson's okay we have tyson yep ibp okay okay anything that's made here in iowa you get good you get good good pork getting good pork yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Iowa, we, we we got we got more hogs than anywhere in the united states of america oh wow okay any place in the world here in iowa wow. i work with uh, my sergeant her, her husband owns, owns a hog farm they have oh. five of them and they have like sixty thousand in each hog farm wow 60, oh, yeah and, and you know, I'm gonna have to do a YouTube video of that one day. Go we to should. a hog farm and just do it and just show y'all how massive these hog farms is. Wow! Said, hog farm. Hey guys, Yo, well, I'm gonna, get your I'm gonna get Joe, off. Uh, where do you get your wrist from, Joe? Okay, Joe. I love you, Joe. Oh, uh, let me answer your question, uh, Will. So I get thank, mine. Thank you. Uh, um, I get mine at Restaurant Depot. Oh, Restaurant Depot. Okay. Yep. And would that be um, like a Jethro? Do we call it Jethro down here? Uh, is it a, like a restaurant supply store? You have it, to be it, a member. It is. It's for all commercial for commercial yeah. food events. Yes. Yeah, and then the Smithfield has some uh, like Pitmaster. What do they call a Pitmaster? Something that that's a lot more meat. Yeah, um, that's true. Pitmaster choice. Pitmaster, Pitmaster choice. choice. Yeah, that's okay. a, that's a good one. Okay. I try not to buy them like at at Walmart. Okay. Okay. Um. Because they have those open coolers, and I see. I've had it where I buy some racks and I bring them home, and they stink out of the package. And I, oh yeah, I throw them away. I don't even okay. go back and get my money back. I just don't buy from, from them anymore. I've had that before, Joe. Yes. They yeah, throw them away, the, man. The, the wrap. Yeah. Yeah, it smells. It'll smell up your whole house, man. Just yeah, throw it, it away. will. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't well, buy. I appreciate you answering my question, Joe. Thanks yeah. a million, man. Restaurant Depot and Shamrock Foods, because you walk into a big freezer, everything's in a freezer. It's not like an open freezer like at Walmart. That's right. Okay. And. And pork, I mean, is bad. I mean, it's it's you can't it mess with it's pork, bad. man. It got to be no. got to be right, man. Pork yeah. and chicken, yeah. mess pork with and it. chicken. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, Joe. We'll Thank see y'all. All right. Later, man. Thanks. But yeah, always, um, you know, and, and what I like doing is, uh, you can you can brine, you can salt brine all your meats. You guys okay. can salt brine ribs too. Really? Okay. Yes, yes. Just, this was like Morton's regular table salt uh, tea? No, kosher salt. Kosher salt, okay. okay. Yeah, you, you want to just, not that iodine salt, you want to stay with from iodine salt. Okay, okay. You want to just use kosher salt, you want to just sprinkle it on lightly okay. and, and just let it sit on there. You will see the color. Ribs, especially steaks, especially briskets. Okay. You know, that brings the flavor. I see. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And Sam's Club have a great choice of uh of, of meat too. Sam's Club does. Yeah, we, we don't have that down here. See? Oh, okay, okay. We have like you know, we our, our stores like uh like Joe was saying, something like restaurant depot. We we have them, but I don't, it's not close to me. I gotta drive like an hour to go oh, no. that's up in Sacramento, California. Because I'm oh, by San Francisco, see. Oh all right. Oh, price of living, oh Lord Jesus. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not there. I don't live there. I'm just saying that's that's yeah. where I have to travel to go get them. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So where are you from? How much? How much? I'm, is... from, I'm from Stockton, California. Okay, Stockton. If you go in the store, you want to buy a rack of ribs. How much is a raw rack of ribs at your store? Probably close to three dollars a pound. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, what kind of ribs? Just the, the, like the stuff that you're talking about. That nasty rib, man. What? Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was when you when you when you explained that to me. I said, yeah. "Damn, man, that's what I've been buying." But and you're right; they're tough because I tried to wrap. Them. I said, "Man, this thing ain't coming out right." And now, now that you schooled me right now, now I'm understanding. See? Yeah, the, the sour ribs you got to stay away from you them. You can't cook them. Yeah, you're right. You're you absolutely right. Them. Yep, they taste like rubber, like a rubber shoe, man. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Excuse my just, language. I'm sorry. No, that's, yeah. okay. that's okay. But you just got to stay away from those sour ribs. Okay, okay. 
They, they make yep. great grant brown beef, ground pork. They make great sausages. Okay. Oh, they make great pork butts, but when it comes to ribs, those sour, the sour ribs just ain't gonna get tender. Okay. I'm a big follower of you, man. I I, I watch a, my wife said, "Man, are you obsessed with T?" I said, "Man, he just got some great. He got some great shows, man. I just hey, I appreciate I'm learning. You. I appreciate you, and I'm glad that you are learning. You know, and 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 that's why I do it for. I don't do it for you know. Uh, I do it because I, I love people, and I like people that like what I like. And if that's I can right. help somebody turn out great barbecue all the time and not waste their money, I'm here. And it's a lot of things that I have learned through a experience, bad experience that I don't want people making the same mistakes. I don't have secrets. I do not. Because my thing is when I look at pit masters that have secret this, a secret that, I, I, I think about something. I say, so when you have secrets, how did you learn that secret? Somebody had to tell you. Somebody had to show you. That's right. That's Somebody right. had to show you or spirits had to show you or something. For so sure. my thing is, the more I share, I think the more it gets shared to me, the more revelations. For sure. The more, For sure. The more stuff that I get out. And I, I always learn stuff from watching other people. I so see. if I'm learning, I'm going to teach you how to do it, too. For sure. I, pre I appreciate you all the way, brother. I really hey, do, man. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. But one thing I, I, I do want to do, though, is I want to make sure when I do these chicken videos, I want to make sure uh, that I show people because a lot of people struggle with chicken. I, and, I, and I'm one of them, man. I sure am. Okay. I really am. So a pellet grill is a pellet grill. Right. It, you have okay. All right, let's reframe that. Okay. Pellet grills are pellet grills, but you have some keep better temperatures. Some do this, some do that. But but it, it to me the quality is pellets. Okay. Does that make sense? Like yeah, a very quality pellet. Jerry Wood pellets. All right. What brand? The 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 trigger brand. Okay, you need to stay away from that trigger brand. Okay, okay. They, they, they mix their pellets with oils. Oh, okay. Yeah, they actually have a lot a class action lawsuit against Trigger oh, for misrepresentation. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, uh, uh, B and B. B and B. Kingsford got great pellets now. Oh. Kingsford pellets. Uh. Uh, pit boss pellets are good. Okay. Uh, another good pellet is what you need to look for is one hundred percent whatever it, it claimed to be. Okay, okay. So if they say one hundred percent, they can't lie. They can't lie. Okay. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're gonna be like trigger. They're gonna get sued. I see. When they say one hundred percent hardwood pellets, that's basically what they are. Okay. It's another company called A Smoke. A Smoke. They, a Smoke got great. I really love their pellets. Okay. They got yeah. Okay. But yeah, so I would first, I would, if I was you, I would go with a better quality pellet. Okay. And then secondly, I would do like when I'm doing my chicken or whatever I do, I would okay. look at lower temperatures okay. and then rev it up to get the temperatures you want, you know. And uh, also, too, and this is just something I try to tell everybody. Okay. Pellet cookers cook the best clean. Okay. Clean your pellet cooker before every cook. I see. Okay. 99% of your problems with pellet grills are because they're not clean. They're not clean. Okay. Can I share something with you? I, like, I, I, I like the trigger. But that's not really my choice of cooking, man. I, I mean, I like it, but I'm going to be very honest with you. And mm -hmm. That I really don't do a lot of cooking on it just because it doesn't really taste like barbecue, man. I, I, stay with my, I stay with my kettle, my Weber, man. Oh, man, Weber. I rather have the Weber grill. It's way more diverse than any grill on the market right now. Okay, okay. So, yes, uh, man, you could put out some... Bad, good barbecue. You got twenty-two inch Weber. I got the biggest one they make. Yeah, 
Um, now you know about the biggest whoever they get to make. Oh no! They, oh, the, well, the one that I see in the stores. Yes, that's. Oh right. yeah, yeah. They, but, they, they got they got uh four to six inch Weber kettle grills. No kidding. Where's where's it? Where do you find that at? Oh, uh, just go to website Weber.com. Okay, okay. They, they got they got a King Ranch. Oh, Look at the King Ranch. Yeah, it, it's huge. Oh. You can put like eight briskets on it. Oh wow! Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's huge, dude. It's huge. Well, I'm going after that heartland. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to get now. Hey, hey, man. Get make sure you tell my son, Joe. Okay. I will. I will. I, I promise you, I will. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Talk. They, they some good guys, or they'll work with you. They will work with you, and, and they also ship them too. So. Uh huh. The, the, yeah. the, 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 I think we. I think I shared something with you. I believe last week about my. Okay. Like, and with that bitter barbecue, man, I gotta tell you, man, it was. He's a dear friend of mine, and, I, and you know, the, when it comes to, you know, criticizing somebody else's food, I really don't want to hurt his feelings. You know what I'm saying? But it was the worst barbecue I ever had, man. It was bitter as hell, man. And, and guess what you gotta do, man? You got to set him free. Yeah. You got to set him free. You, you, I, I, I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna sit here and eat your barbecue. It's nasty. Right. I just don't do it. I almost wanted to ask him for my money back because I bought I bought it for my workers. <laughs> my workers, I just wanted to see what their reaction was. Uh, one of the ladies that works for me, she goes, man, where did you get this? I said, did you like it? She goes, man, it's the worst barbecue I ever had in my life. And I said, I'm sorry to give it to you. Oh, and that's the thing about it, though. You, you And that's what I'm trying to say. People charge the same for good barbecue and bad barbecue. You're right, man. I'm stepped Man, damn. It, it just is what it is because barbecue is one of those things that are man, we got a barbecue place I went to and I'm a big guy. I come to the restaurant big man, I'm sorry, I'm big like hey, I say I want a whole slab of ribs. This woman bring me out a big slab of ribs. I go to bite the rib. I'm doing this. Oh hell, man! Worse, man. Damn. Hey, I put a rib down, and I tell her, "Hey, you're right, brother. You're right. You you one hundred percent right." And I tell the waitress, "I say, look, I can't eat it. I literally cannot eat this barbecue." <laughs> Damn. That's you know what she crazy. tell me? What do you want? Free food? Oh man, come on, man. Damn. I say, I say, crazy, man. Wow. Last time we're going that's a to shame, man. That, that that that's a shame, man. I'm serious. I paid for that half for that whole slab of rib, I paid $27 plus the size was not included. I paid $40 almost for everything. Wow. And didn't eat nothing. Yeah. So did they give you the money back at least? No. Wow, man. Damn. No, she, she was That's like crazy. Oh. Uh, hey, but it is what it is, man. Yeah, right. I tell people you gonna pay the same for good barbecue or bad barbecue, so you might as well be the best you can be. That's right. That's right. Well, brother, I mean, you I got, got a good price. You said you sell your ribs for twenty five dollars a slab. Yeah, man, that is a that is a great price, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I never have complaints because I, I try to give people great quality ribs. I, I try to buy. The same brand every single chance I get, uh -huh. and and that's the problem. I try to stick with the same brand of ribs, you know. Uh -huh. And what brand is that, T? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, uh, it, it, it's 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 the. Uh, I'm trying to think the name. Can of you it. share that with me, or you just can't yes, share I that? Can. Yes, I can. It, it, it's, it's it's the uh, Smithfield brand. Smithfield brand, okay. Smithfield, yeah, yeah, okay. Smithfield, yep. Okay, Smithfield, yeah. okay. It, it, well, sometimes I got to buy the bulk, but I don't, I don't buy the bulk too much. Okay. Now, baby bags, I cook all brands of baby bags. Okay, all brands of baby bags. Okay. Yeah, but when it comes to spare ribs, I uh -huh. stick with, uh, I stick with Smithfield. And what would you pay for something like that per pound? Uh, Smithfield. Yeah. Oh, uh, if you get a you get a spare reel for a dollar seventy five bulk. Okay. 
Okay. You get you get uh for St. Louis you get two fifty. Okay. For baby backs three dollars. Baby backs okay. Okay. A pound. Okay. A pound. okay. Yep. You, you, you always wanna you always wanna make sure and, and just just like my boy Mad Wood Barbecue say. I'll throw it away before I serve it. Amen, brother. Amen. For sure. Yeah, for sure, man. Right? Yes, yeah. you, you, you got to. You got, you got to throw away that stuff before you serve. Well, I'm about to get started on this video, brother. Okay, well, man, it was nice that. chatting with you, man. How oh, nice to you. I haven't seen Uncle Sad. Yeah, Uncle Sad, when he get his shots, he coming back, man. Okay. You know, hey, if any of y'all guys want to fly here and hang out with me doing a cooking event, let me know. We can hook up. Okay, and when do you when when is your next big event coming? You got anything in March? I got uh March. I'm doing all right. The first event next week. I'm doing uh at Dollar Fresh, a grocery store. I'll be there. Okay. Saturday, and then I'm doing a big cook for a dollar for scholars, and basically okay. that is a fundraiser. And what day is that? It's March twentieth. March twentieth. Yeah, it's a fundraiser. Okay, March twentieth. Okay. For kids that want to go to college that, 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 that can't afford it, we give them free scholarships. Oh, I see. Okay. March the yeah. 20th. Okay. Yeah. So TNT, I'll be uh I'll be out there cooking all the meat, cooking the cooking the chicken, cooking the uh pork loin, cheese and potatoes, green beans. Will you have yeah. your heartland out there? Oh uh, yes, I will. Okay. Okay. I have a heartless smoker. I have my beast out there. I'm doing a lot of cooking, so I got to make sure okay. I have all my food ready to go. All right, T. Well, it was nice chatting with you, my brother. See y'all later, man. God bless right. you. God bless. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.